This is PPSCF from my earlier videos. And this is PPS without fibers from this video. Don't worry, I will reprint it. Stay tuned. Welcome to another filament testing video. Wax Polyer sent me this spool together with other spools for the testing. This is a PPS TF. The TF is just a shortcut for toughened. I already tested several PPS filaments on this channel, but they are reinforced with carbon fibers. And I'm curious about its base materials. I got this box for free, but there is no additional payment. However, this video and actually the whole channel is sponsored by Polymaker, who became a channel sponsor. Few specifications from the website. This is temperature and flame retendant material, high dimensional stability, which uh, I'm not sure compared to the CF because the carbon fibers usually helps here and I'm curious how much shrinking we will have with the base material only. Excellent chemical resistance and this I can read in many specifications for the PPS filament but I'm not testing it. I'm a mechanical engineer not chemical so the next one is great mechanical strength and this is exactly what I'm testing in this video. And the most important question for this video will be does it still sound like metal? This is a PPS CF and the very interesting specifications which I can see in the comments is the most interesting that it sounds like a metal. And I'm curious if the base material without carbon fiber still sounds like it. Recommended print settings, nozzle temperature between 300 and 320 degrees Celsius, bed between 90 and 120 degrees Celsius, ambient temperature, properly this is a chamber temperature between 70 and 100 degrees Celsius. I can find some other source for this material, which starts from the 60, so definitely this will be a job for my KD Plus 4, which can print above 300 degrees Celsius and also have an actively heated chamber. Now about the drying. PPS has low moisture sensitivity and I couldn't find any drying information on the Wax Polyer website. Some other brands recommend some drying, but they also mentioned that it is not so sensitive to the moisture. But I will see, maybe I will start the printing out of the box, but if I will notice some problems, then I will place it in the dryer too. Usually they use this kind of packaging where it is more sensitive to moisture and looks like it is resealable on the smaller side. And now I notice that this better packaging is only on this side. Here it's a regular foil. Same information on the spool like on the website. Let's see how brittle is the filament. Not brittle at all. There is some whitening on the surface similar to ABS filaments. I'm missing here the information what is the weight of the empty spool. But let's prepare the slicer and start with the printing. Preheated to 300 degrees Celsius. And I can feel that the filament is loaded. I'm using the textured PI sheet with some glue on it. Settings in the slicer. I'm starting from KDPPS profile, the nozzle temperature 320 degrees Celsius, on the bed 110, 6 will be the maximum flow, and the maximum particle in here it will be 30, but later I will change this value to 50. I'm printing all test objects at once. The start is good, this is the second layer now, and if the particle will be okay, then it will be fine printing. <laughs> Maybe from this angle it is better visible. And even on the second layer, the chamber temperature is almost 60 degrees Celsius. The printing is at 75% and I noticed some micro warping on two test objects. It's not big, but it's there, so it's on edge of the printability. And also I noticed that I set the chamber temperature to 60 instead of 65 degrees Celsius. But the difference is not big. Almost success, but failed at the end. Stop the printing. Oh, I didn't even notice that I have another failed object here. Looks like the bed adhesion is not so, but it's good. So it still warps. Hmm. This is what I was afraid of, the part calling was not enough. But where it sticks, the adhesion is quite good. So the warping is the problem. From three field objects, two are printed, and now the third one. And this time it will be finished correctly. The chamber temperature increased to 65 degrees Celsius and the part cooling to 50%. Printing a bench with this technical filament is always a big challenge. The most critical part is just coming on higher Z coordinates. 
but these settings should work now. What is not visible here is the part cooling, which I increased to 50%. It will be finished soon and <laughs> some stringing appeared. This is new. Otherwise, not bad. Let's check it on the daylight and now you notice that this is some kind of grayish black color. Not that benchy, but some stringing appeared. I already mentioned. I hope it's visible on the screen too. And uh, the whole line is also visible, but otherwise the critical parts are these overhangs, bridging and uh, chimney, and they came out good. How does it sound? This is PPS. This is carbon fiber ABS. Mm, I don't know, but let's print a bell. This will be approximately 40 minutes printing. So this is PPS, yeah, from my earlier videos. And this is PPS without fibers. Mm, decide yourself. One more time. Just quickly to check the dimension for the shrinking. And I want to measure about the elephant foot. 79.91. So it has a shrinking, but it's very minimal and smaller compared to the ABS. Just one more check and just to measure about the elephant foot. Theoretically this is 60 millimeters and it is just a little bit smaller. An interesting proof that the warping depends from other things too, not only from the shrinking. Let's start the mechanical testing. Tensile test with horizontal printed objects. This is the average from two. I will include the numbers from two tested PPSCF filaments. And in this case PPS is weaker, but this is not bad compared to the other filament types. Layer adhesion test with vertically printed objects. Hmm, disappointing. This was quite weak layer adhesion, so let's see if we can improve this. I'm printing these test objects on 350 degrees Celsius, 65 is the chamber temperature. And if those overhangs will be printed correctly, then this will be measurable. I am having this D12 dice next to it, just to have more time for the layer to cool down. But also I want to see if those overhangs will be printed too. Test objects are almost finished. I will check those overhangs later when I take it out. And there is some stringing, but I don't care about it. Maybe I should dry the filament because it was on the open air maybe 5 days. I think the print quality is on the edge of acceptable. I mean stringing is cleanable, but here I can see that it needed a little bit more cooling or lower temperature. And now let's see the change. Oh, completely different story. And with this small change, the layer adhesion from weak became a great. But which number to add to that pattern summary table? Well, probably this one, the average from 2 with some comment, because this was really on edge of the printability. I noticed that this is quite often that the companies don't recommend too high temperatures because the less people will complain about the layer adhesion, but the more people will complain if they don't have good print quality. So that's why they recommend a little bit lower temperatures, just in case. That's why it is important to measure your layer adhesion. And actually in the future I will prepare a test where, which everybody can do at the home and find out what is the layer adhesion for his filament, his printer and his settings. Two-sided shear test, side-by-side -side horizontally and vertically printed test objects. With horizontally printed objects, uh, fibers usually helps here. But this value belongs to the strongest group without fibers, mostly with the polycarbonate filaments. For vertically printed objects, the layer adhesion is important, so no surprises here that it's weaker compared to the PPS CF. Torsion or twist test, side-by-side -side vertically and horizontally printed oh, objects. Please. And I try to record the load at 90 degree rotation and the maximum load. Usually I get similar values, only this vertically printed breaks more suddenly. But here this layer attention was quite weak, so the break load was lower in this case. But even then, this value for the horizontal printed object is higher compared to the PPS CF. With vertically printed objects, well, we have that weaker layer attention, so PPS is weaker. Crypt has a deformation under constant load. Fifteen point seventy three, and the last day of measuring sixteen point fourteen. 
On this graph, we can see the distance between two reference surfaces, and we can see the PPSCF is stiffer material with less deformation, but also with less creeping. Now, this PPS also resists good to the creeping because these are very small values. Only on first day it has uh, some minimal creeping, but after this, basically, this is almost zero. Impact test with half program hammer. Zero position. This is a slow motion footage view from the second camera. And these are the edge positions of the hammer. Distance from zero position is 21 millimeters, and from this I can calculate the breaking energy. And even if it is called toughened, this is still more brittle compared to the PPSCF. Three point bending test distance between supports is 50 millimeters, and I'm measuring the deformation under these loads after 1, 30, and 60 seconds. This is under 5 kilograms, and this is a deformation under 10 kilograms. And pay attention, almost no additional deformation after half minute. Well, carbon fibers always helps in this test, but for non-reinforced filament, this is quite good. Look at this under 10 kilograms, very minimal deformation during this one minute, almost no additional deformation after half minutes. Temperature test in the oven, where I want to record the temperature of the first deformation, and I had to analyze the footage and the first deformation I noticed at approximately 210 centigrades. I stopped the experiment on 234 degrees Celsius. And it was flexible on this temperature, PPSCF would still be completely hard. Summary of all results one more time. This one line will be added to the summary table for my pattern supporters. This is the result of the layer adhesion test, shear test, bending test deformation after 30 seconds, bending test deformation after 1, 30, and 60 seconds. Torsion test, impact test, and temperature test. And a small reminder, huge advantage of this material is its chemical resistance, which I'm not testing. It warps, uh, so definitely you will need a printer with actively heated chamber, and if you need some strength along the z-axis too, definitely you should go above the maximum recommended print temperature. This is my experience with YX Polyair PPS filament. To all my Patreon supporters, huge thanks because they make this kind of videos possible. To Polymaker, thanks for the sponsoring my research activity. And to all you others, thank you for watching this video and follow me to my next one. Happy printing!